Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm Chef Sylvia, and I'm here to teach you how to make the perfect peanut butter and jelly. You may be thinking, no way. There's no way I could be the person to make the perfect peanut butter and jelly. But I'm here to tell you, I have a sort of well-known secret that is not a secret anymore. I've been making peanut butter and jellies for years. I am very experienced. I know how to make it quick, fast, easy, and good quality at the same time. Not like one of those trash peanut butter and jellies someone makes and they're like, oh my gosh, it's so quick but it's not that good of quality. I'm gonna use quality ingredients, quality technique, and quality time frame, because you don't want it to be too long, you don't want it to take too long, you still want it to be good. I'm gonna teach you how to do all these things in one video. Let's get started. We're gonna take a quick detour to the kitchen, where all of my greatest peanut butter and jellies have been made. We're going to head into the first place to find our ingredients, the pantry. Then we're going to head into the fridge where all my greatest ingredients are kept. And to the counter for one of the key ingredients. Now we're going to be needing our supplies. First off, a plate. I'm going to be using a paper plate. And lastly, I'm going to be needing a knife. So here we have our key ingredients. Bread, jelly, and peanut butter. Then we have our knife and our plate. We're going to start off with our bread. So, what I like to do is untwist the top first with great technique. And then I'm going to put it off to the side and search through the bread to find the best two slices. Now that I have picked out the two perfect pieces of bread, I twist the bread wrapper and then put the twisty back on, closing the bread shut. This way I can keep my ingredients fresh, which is key in sandwich making. Now that I've had my two pieces of bread laid out, it is ready for adding ingredients, peanut butter and jelly, which is the next step in sandwich making. Now it's time to start adding ingredients. I untwist the lid and flick the lid away. This is the technique I've used. As you can see in this process, it knocked over my camera, but it's all about the process. So now I take a small amount of peanut butter and lather it slowly onto the bread. And as you guys can see, I also slowed down the process a little bit just so you guys can really see what I'm doing. The bread sort of sinks underneath whenever I add the peanut butter, but this is because I'm really letting the bread to soak in all the peanut butter that I'm putting on it. And this adds for a great taste and great effect on your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And even though it may look not so great here, it ends up making a really good sandwich overall. Now I'm going to show you all a great technique I've used and it works really well, but I'm going to wipe off the excess peanut butter on the knife. So that way it's pretty clean. I don't have to waste water and wash it off so I can take my jelly and put the knife, the same knife in it. So I don't have to use another knife and I don't have to use water to clean it. So now I put the cap back on the peanut butter and move on to the next step of sandwich making. Now, I'm going to take the jelly and open it. Now that I have the jelly open, it's time to start adding it to the bread. I scoop out a piece of it with my knife and I just sort of put some on there, just any amount really. I like to have a lot of jelly because I think it adds a lot of taste. So now I'm going to spread it on very carefully. And like I said, I do this a little bit slower so you guys can really see my process. Now you may be seeing that in this video, I turn the plate around. This is so I can get as much covered area of bread as I can. I wanna cover the bread a lot so I can make sure that my ingredients are all over the bread and make sure that there is no plain space of just bread. 
Now, I'm done with the jelly, so I close the lid, twist it, and push it to the side. Now, I lick off the knife because I want it to be clean, and it is easier to clean once I've done this, so I put it in the sink. I go back, and now it is time for one of the most important things that really show how well you did on your sandwich. You're going to want to carefully put the bread in the center and place the other piece of bread. I usually have to put the jelly on top just because that's how I like it. And I place it on there, pat on a little bit to make sure it's secure, and there you have your sandwich. There may be some holes in it, but that just means there are extra flavors and more seeping through because you have so much of nice ingredients. And you are done with your sandwich. However, you're not done with the quality testing. There is still a taste test involved in this process. As you can see, I'm going to put some milk in a cup because this is one of the best parts. Adding milk and, you know, just drinking it while you're eating the sandwich. It's one of the best drinks to have while having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner. As you can see, I'm taste testing it just to make sure it's just right, and it is. Now for the actual taste test. As you can see, so far the presentation of the sandwich looks really good. It looks really nice. And now for the actual tasting. I like to take my time when eating my peanut butter and jelly sandwich because I really like to evaluate and see how I did. And in this case, I did really well. I think this sandwich is really good and I could say this is a perfect sandwich. Now I like to wash it down with a nice glass of milk. And as you can see, I can't contain my excitement. This is a really good meal. I totally recommend this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. And now you all can make the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Thanks for watching.